today we are going to go over the Gordon Ryan vs. Andre Galvao match at the 2022 ADCC Super Fight. During this time, it was Andre's fifth time defending the Super Fight title, which is insanely impressive on his end. And we have the pound for pound number one grappler in the world, Gordon Ryan who dominated his regular division in ADCC and also took the super fight at the same tournament, something that's usually not done during these events, but Gordon requested that he would be able to do it. The organizer of ADCC did allow it this time. Andre gets a little bit too excited, and while he's pushing, accidentally throws a strike, but it doesn't look like it really bothers Gordon too much. Now we're seeing a little bit of hand fighting from here. Gordon usually likes to stand pretty straight up when he is engaging in the stand up. When Gordon's strategy is to end up on top and take the other person down, he does do a decent amount of level changing. And when his opponent lowers their head, he does try to match their head level as well. And we've seen that in previous matches at ADCC. But because he doesn't mind being taken down in this particular match, he isn't trying to match Andre's head level at all. And as soon as Andre commits even just a little bit to his first takedown, Gordon does nothing to stop it and ends up on his back. But it is confirmed from Gordon's coach, John Danaher, that this is exactly what they wanted in the match. Andre's only real realistic path to victory is standing grappling. Okay, that would require him to take Gordon down, presumably multiple times after the first 10 minutes and not be taken down at all by Gordon. I told Gordon before the match, just go out and offer him the leg. As soon as Gordon sees an opening, he's able to split Gordon's legs open. That allows him an opening to get his hips under Andre. And then immediately he starts attacking a leg. So Gordon is able to get the single leg X. He's able to expose Andre's heel. And then he starts going for a heel hook. Andre did a good job of pulling his foot out so it's not at the maximum leverage point. Normally Gordon would want the heel flush against his elbow area, but right now it's a little bit too far out. And in this frame, Andre has to worry about three things. He has to worry about his foot, he has to worry about his heel being too deep into Gordon's arms, and he has to worry about Gordon's right leg hooking behind Andre's left knee. So the first thing he does is push Gordon's left leg down and then at the same time he jumps his left leg over Gordon's right leg and that neutralizes Gordon's hook. Right after he's making sure that he's pushing down Gordon's left leg so it goes below his knee line and once he feels like he's out of the bat position that's when he starts pulling out his leg. So Andre is able to successfully defend the heel hook and he's trying to engage Gordon on his terms but Gordon is able to grab Andre's right heel with his right arm and that allows him to suck him in and force half guard. Now initially it does look like that Andre does have a pretty good position. He has inside position on both of his knee and his elbow for a possible knee slice pass but all of that changes once Gordon is able to grab Andre's left leg with his right arm. Gordon starts getting his hips under Andre once again, almost like he's going to initiate a deep half guard. Andre tries to avoid this by backstepping, but as soon as he backsteps, Gordon transitions into another leg entanglement on Andre's left leg this time. Now you can see that 100% of Andre's attention is on Gordon's left ankle. And the reason for this is because he cannot allow him to hook behind his right knee. When Andre feels like he has the right angle to pull his leg out, that is when he's able to let go of Gordon's ankle at the same time to end up back in a neutral position again. So right after they reset in the middle of the mat, Gordon does a slick move here where he extends his left leg and he's able to hook behind Andre's ankle. That stops Andre from backing up and that allows Gordon to pull himself in and immediately he starts bringing his hips under Andre once again. Andre is doing his best to try to stand. Gordon uses that momentum to perform a single leg X sweep and that gets Andre to the ground briefly. It's very important that Gordon continues to have control of at least one leg here. Andre is trying to pull his foot out. Gordon follows and then he starts attacking the back. 
You can see that Andre is extending his right arm to try to prevent the hooks from coming in. And while Andre is defending his right side, that's when Gordon does the smart move and starts attacking his left side and goes for a simple foot sweep. As soon as Andre is in turtle position, he immediately Granby rolls. Clear and make our partner's arm go from our hip to our tailbone. So we're one here, two, and three. Now that we've cleared, we can slide our shoulder down to the mat. When he goes to hold my hip, it's very, very difficult for him to do that. Now from here, we're focusing on showing our hips towards our partner, making our legs heavy, and we're back to the guard position once again. And while they're trying to reestablish position, Gordon does end up giving up the underhook on his right side, and that allows Andre to elevate Gordon just a little bit with his right foot hook. He also has the underhook on his left side. He's able to transfer his right foot hook to his left foot. And because he already has the underhook on his left side, he does try to go for a butterfly sweep, but he wasn't able to trap Gordon's left arm in time. And Gordon is able to base out with his left arm. And then Andre has to accept butterfly guard. Now this is going to be a very, very difficult situation for Andre and we're just under 18 minutes into the match so he has a lot of time to work this time andre is able to get a single leg x onto gordon but we can see the difference between what gordon was able to do versus what andre is able to do gordon is making sure that his leg is not in range for andre to be able to grab it like he did to andre earlier so it's going to be tougher to get that single leg X sweep. And also Gordon's hips aren't right above Andre's. So this isn't a very good position for Andre to actually get the sweep from here. Eventually Gordon is able to get his foot to the ground. He starts putting pressure on Andre. And then Andre is forced to go back into a regular open guard. And this is when Gordon starts initiating into Andre's half guard. Now there's a few things that we need to note about ADCC. Points aren't initiated until after 10 minutes. It's probably in his best interest to get Andre tired. And so right now he's not in any sort of rush to try to pass Andre's guard and waste his energy. Right now he's just trying to put a ton of weight on Andre and wear him out as much as possible at this point. So now we're at the 13 minute mark and this is when things start changing. Up until now, Andre has been very disciplined about keeping that knee shield in between them. So he tries to go into a regular open guard. And when he tries to transition, he gets rid of his knee shield. He has Gordon's left wrist with his right arm and he's trying to push Gordon's arm away so he can get into a more comfortable open guard position. But Gordon does a good job of controlling Andre's right ankle to make sure that he stays in the half guard position. And then when Andre overextends a little bit with his right leg, Gordon uses that to bring his left hand over Andre's right knee. And that gives him a better position to push the knee down so he's able to enter Andre's half guard without his knee shield. Now this is a huge turning point in the match because now Gordon is past the knee shield, he's hip to hip with Andre, and then he settles into a chest to chest half guard with Andre being flat on his back. And once Gordon feels comfortable with the head and arm grip, he starts trying to pry his right leg out to either get a knee slice into side control or go directly into mount. Andre is able to slip his left arm under Gordon and he is able to get a slight underhook. And once he initiates that, you can see that Gordon stops trying to pass. This is an example of Gordon being very patient right now. He's waiting for the right time to be able to start passing again, but he's not going to do it until he's in the perfect position to do so. Again, we do see Gordon go for that head and arm position once again. Then he starts feeling comfortable to start passing. But Andre's last line of defense is his right arm by Gordon's hips. It doesn't seem like much, but it really did make all of the difference in this position. So as soon as Gordon is able to clear Andre's legs, Andre's right arm prevents Gordon from getting into mount position from here. So Gordon is forced to go to north-south for a second, but because he doesn't have that underhook on Andre's left side anymore, 
He's able to get underhook on his left side and he is able to use his left knee to elevate Gordon and he is able to recover back into half guard. But he isn't able to keep the knee shield and that allows Gordon to be able to go chest to chest on him again. And we're back into the position that we were before. But Andre is very far from being out of the woods in this position. He's still flat on his back in half guard with no knee shield and that gives Gordon a lot of options to pass his guard. When Gordon is able to make Andre face away from him, that's when he starts forcing three quarters guard and he's looking to transition into mount from here. Once his knee is touching the floor, he's making sure that he's putting all of his energy and weight on that knee. Andre is trying to do his best to try to elevate him and to get out of this position, but Gordon is just too heavy for him. He's putting too much pressure and Gordon is looking for a chance to be able to settle into position. Gordon tries to bring his right leg to initiate mount or take the back, but Andre is able to push his leg back in to quarter guard. Gordon is staying patient, making sure that he doesn't lose the position that he worked for. But overall, this is not looking good for Andre at all. While Andre is trying to fight for inside position with his left arm, that is when Gordon is able to sneak his right leg out and Andre isn't able to reach his foot this time around and now he's stuck in mount. Now Andre is in a really bad position here. We can see that Andre is doing his best to recover. But right now, Gordon has all of the control and there's two options from here. Andre can either accept being in full mount or Gordon is going to take his back. Because Andre is facing more down than he is facing up, Gordon decides to start attacking the back from here. He's able to bring him over and he gets the body triangle as soon as he starts attacking the back. For the rest of the match, which is about five and a half minutes, Gordon is able to maintain control against one of the best grapplers in the world right now. And there is no point during this time where Andre looks like he's going to be able to get out. It takes a tremendous amount of endurance from the attacker to be able to focus, grip fight, and attack the back for as long as Gordon Ryan does. So up until the eight minute mark, we finally see that Gordon is able to grab Andre's wrist, push it down. So now Gordon is able to lock out the body triangle with Andre's arm trapped. Now Andre only has one arm to defend, but I mean, look at the freaking muscles on Andre, man. He has basically no neck. It's like trying to choke out a turtle that's in a shell. Even the best guy in the world right now, Gordon Ryan, it still takes him about five and a half minutes to actually start getting the rear naked choke. But eventually he is able to isolate both arms. He is eventually able to get under the neck and he is able to tap Andre Galvao. So thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed the breakdown and I will see you in the next video.